How great is this? The only thing that went through my head that was negative when Peter King announced his retirement was, oh, we probably don't get to talk to him every week anymore. But as the season was rolling around, there was no two ways about it. We were like, hey, at least once or twice, right? Let's call Peter because he's still one of our favorites. And by the way, uh, he's an active retiree because – Tell us about this podcast you're doing with some real fancy people called Let's Go, Peter. And hello, how are you? I'm doing great, guys. Good to talk to you again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jim Gray called and asked me if uh, I wanted to do this Monday radio show. It's the one he did with Tom Brady for a long time, and now Brady has got his hands full with the uh, with the Fox thing, so he's going to be an occasional guest, and now it'll be uh, – Bill Belichick will be the big star and Max Crosby will be on and, and uh, I'll be on for a segment every week. So it'll be fun. Do it every Monday during the season and it'll be on uh, Sirius XM and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. Can't wait. Those are some big names yeah. and some big voices. Peter King joining us on the River Islands guest line on Willard and Dibs. Dibs is out today for the weekend. Uh, we're glad to have Peter. Peter, uh, you know, first question, obviously, is your view from 10,000 feet on the Niners offseason as a whole, which is still unfolding, What what's your take on all this? Well, what happens when you have a bunch of big stars on your team and salaries start to explode is that you know, really good players are going to say, I want mine. And if you're Brandon Ayuk, there's a chance that uh, this could be his only time at really being able to hit a contractual grand slam. And so he did everything he could to do so. Now, that's not good for the 49ers as a team, really, to, uh, to have a guy be totally, uh, you, you know, kind of totally – uh, occupying everyone's time in training camp. I think everybody kind of feels, and I still feel that, you know, the first game of the season that Trent Williams will be there and he hardly needs training camp. But, uh, but the fact that uh, it, it didn't, it's, it's still not done, I think really is a little bit of a bummer for this team. And I think they're going to need him against a really good defense in the New York Jets in the first game of the season. But, look, if you're really good and you've got a lot of really good players, you're going to have a bunch of contract hassle. And clearly that's almost all what the 49ers offseason uh, has been. Um, Peter, it has been suggested, maybe not reported in ink, but suggested that especially with the drafting of a first-round wide receiver – that if Brandon Ayuk gets a big payday, it's probably going to mean the end of Debo Samuel after this year. I don't know that that's the case, but if it is the case, was this a good move? We'll see. I mean, I think that, and I shouldn't say I think, I don't know. I've not talked to John Lynch. have not talked to Kyle Shanahan, so I don't know what they're thinking. But my guess is that they were probably thinking, look, we got to sign Brock Purdy, um, you know, next off season, and he's going to make a gazillion dollars. <laughs> and obviously, we'd like to have Trent Williams back for. I, I would guess they would want him back for absolute minimum two years. Uh, and so, there's only so many bucks that you have to go around. So, I would be surprised, and I think you guys are right. Uh, if Debo Samuel is back. However, I think part of this move clearly was the fact that they didn't want to go from having the best one-two combination in football in 2023 in Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk to having both of them off the team uh, 18 months later. So I think that's why John Lynch, my gut feeling, that's why he gritted his teeth and basically said, look, there's a lot of things in this job that I don't like, that I have to put up with, 
that I have to just walk away from that I have to have sleepless nights over. And this is one of them. But I think he'd be feeling a lot worse today if he didn't have Brandon Ayuk and he had some cap room and then he entered next season, not even positive that he'd be able to sign Debo Samuel. So I, I understand why they did what they did. Peter King with us here on Willard and Dibbs 95-7 the game. Peter, who is the biggest threat to the 49ers in the NFC? I think Detroit and uh, I want to say Philadelphia because I want to act like the last seven or eight weeks of the season last year, uh, like we really didn't see that. Can we please pretend that didn't happen? Because there was a time last year where I think we all thought it was a given. It was going to be the Eagles and the, uh, uh, and Kansas City or, or whoever. The, but the Eagles were going to be in the Super Bowl. They're, they're 10 and 1. They're, they're playing great and all that. And, and, and all that, even though, you know, the Niners would have been a very serious threat to them. I, I believe that around Thanksgiving last year, that most people thought that the Eagles were, uh, you know, had the best shot to get to the Super Bowl. Now, having said all that, it, regardless of how the season went, who won when, everything like that, the football season is an absolutely bizarre occurrence because no matter what anybody looks like, we saw what. Uh, on Christmas weekend last year, the Chiefs uh, look like the Chicago White Sox or something uh, against the Raiders. You know, they were they played poorly. Everybody thought, okay, that's it. They're finally going to fall to earth. And they recovered. And I think the opposite thing happened to the, to the Eagles. And so when I look at the Eagles right now, I really don't know what to expect. So I'm going to take the safe pick and I'll say it's going to be the lions. I think the lions have so many good things going for them. And we saw a lot of those things in Santa Clara in the championship game. But uh, I think they're going to come back really, really strong. And I think for the 49ers to hold them off this year, It'll be an incredible feat. What's your biggest question about the 49ers this year? And and it sounds like you're comfortable, as most are, that the Trent thing, one way or another, is going to get figured out. So what's your next remaining question? I think, you know, look, I think for the most part, for the most part, last year, and look, everybody gets some injuries, but like one of the reasons why it's so hard to predict with any sort of confidence what's going to happen in an NFL season is, you know, I'd like to know are Debo Samuel and, uh, and, and Brandon, I going to play, are they each going to play 15 of 17 regular season games or, or, or more? Um, is an old left tackle. Assuming he comes in, Trent Williams going to be able to stay healthy. Um, you know, is Brock Purdy going to be able to stay upright? All of these things are questions that I think are really important because, and I think this is really a significant factor with the 49ers, the depth at the really big positions for them is not great. You know, if they get a couple of receiver injuries, they're in trouble. Uh, They get a quarterback injury. Look, everybody's in trouble if they get a quarterback injury. But the 49ers certainly would be. And, you know, some of the depth uh, on defense uh, is is missing because clearly you can't pay everyone. So I, I don't know. I would say overall the thing I would worry about most with the 49ers is are my great players going to be playing uh, on G- on January 15th. That's what I want to know. And if they are, I really like their chances to get back again. Peter King with us here, Withered and Dibs, 95-7 the game. I want to go back to something you said a moment ago about Brock Purdy, about how he's going to get a bucket full of, of money next year. And I think while that is obvious to a certain degree, 
I, I'm sure you're well aware, and we've talked about it so much, the, the the sort of view of Brock because of being drafted in the seventh round, I think part of it is also the way he looks. I keep hearing a lot of people go, Brock's going to take less because he just seems like a nice guy. And, and it's like, <laughs> I, I don't think that's how it works. He's going to have an agent. He's going to want money too. But people seem hesitant to put his salary up at the top of the quarterback chart despite his numbers. If he has another good year, how do you see this playing out? I mean, he's a human being. He's not a he's not a mascot. He's not Radar O'Reilly. I mean, he's <laughs> this guy this guy is an excellent NFL quarterback. And you know, let's let's talk about the insanity of quarterback salaries. Yep. Okay, let's let's just talk about him. So, twelve years ago, there was not a single quarterback in the NFL making twenty million a year. Twelve years ago, okay. Today, sixteen quarterbacks average forty million or more, and so that's happened in twelve years. That's what's happened. So, I don't even get all that emotional about it because. You know, somebody is going to say, well, geez, uh, uh, you know, it's total insanity. Of course, it's insanity <laughs> to think about paying Brock Purdy 55, 58, 60 million. We all know that. It's, it's crazy. However, I'm just going to say that for those who would say that maybe Brock Purdy shouldn't make that money, maybe Brock Purdy won't be crazy and maybe he'll give the team a break. Uh, look, I have. I have no idea. Last time I talked to him was after the championship game. Uh, and I certainly didn't talk to him about this. So I don't know what he's thinking, but I will just make one point. To me, for John Lynch, for Kyle Shanahan, for Jed York, the worst thing that happened in this off season was the contract Jacksonville gave to Trevor Lawrence. Because Trevor Lawrence after losing five of the last six last year in quarterbacking the Jacksonville Jaguars out of the playoffs and Trevor Lawrence, who's who in his three year career is 10 games below 500 and who last year was the NFL's 21st rated quarterback is now tied with Joe Burrow and whoever else. Jordan I forget love. who it is. Jordan love. Uh, it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Love as the, uh, with the highest average salary, in NFL history. All that means is that, you know, don't tell me that some guy doesn't deserve it uh, or that Brock Purdy, well, you know, he was the last pick in the draft. He's on a great team. He's got great weapons, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I don't care at all. Brock Purdy uh, deserves to make what the best quarterbacks make because he has played like the best quarterbacks. There's the sentence right there. I, I think that's the end-all, be-all on it. Peter King with us uh, on 95.7 The Game. Hey, Peter, uh, just because our fan base has spent so much time with contractual negotiations this offseason, a uh, fun question in looking back on, on your career, what, what, was, what was the most difficult contractual conversation you ever ended up in? <laughs> well, in 2013... There's a guy who's huge in the founding and development of ESPN. It was a guy named John Walsh. Yep. And John Walsh was a great guy. And he came to me and he offered me uh, the ability to have my own football website at ESPN, hire my own people, uh, have an office, uh, you know, make very significant money and, and all this. And, and so I was thinking about it. But I thought to myself, um, you know, I really owe an awful lot to Sports Illustrated more than, you know, everybody can say whatever they want about their employer and what it meant to be at, with their employer for a long time. But, but you know, in reality, uh, by the time this happened, I'd been at SI for 24 years and when I got there in 1989, you know, covering the NFL for SI was, you know, like being the biggest NFL person at ESPN. And so the, I, I got a lot of places in my career 
because of SI. And I just went back to him, and I knew how much ESPN w- w- would pay me, and I didn't ask SI for that, but I did think to myself, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, be a pig at the trough here, but I'd be stupid to not take nearly as much or, or something like that. And so I asked them for it and they were good enough to say, I think it's fair. And so that I never really had what I consider to be a real tough negotiation because people, I think people were always really fair to me, but that's one when I look back at it, I, I say, well, now in my retirement, I probably could have had a little bit more money uh, in my uh, in my 401k, <laughs> but I'm pretty happy the way things turned out. I tell you what, Peter, we've had this whole debate here in the Bay Area all summer about who's got more leverage, the Niners or Brandon Ayuk. I've decided the answer yeah. is Peter King. <laughs> well, I had a I I had a I had a lot of fun, but you know, can I just say one thing about that whole leverage thing with yeah, Ayuk? And, of course, and all that because to me. Look, I always thought, even on that day, whatever it was, uh, three weeks ago, whatever it was, where, you know, it looked like the 49ers might trade him to Pittsburgh or to Cleveland, or I guess it never was very close with New England uh, in terms of Ayuk accepting to go there. But I always thought that if you're a player once in your life, just once, you'd like to have the ability for a team to say, okay, we're either going to pay you or else you're going to have the ability to nix. It sounds like from everything I heard and read. And again, I have to say in another lifetime, I probably would know this with absolute certainty, but it certainly sounded like he had the ability to have a a big say on whether he was either going to go to Cleveland or Pittsburgh or whether he was going to stay. And so to me, I think that is a great thing. And I kind of agree with John Lynch. And I saw what Adam Schefter uh, reported yesterday, which is this is the same deal that's been on the table for three weeks, basically. And it's a little ridiculous that, that I didn't, uh, didn't take it then. However, I guess I would say if I were him, I've never met one player who says, man, I can't wait to get into training camp. (laughs) So this, this was also, Brandon Ayuk's ticket, as it has been, I'm sure, for Trent Williams to avoid, uh, you know, practicing in the Santa Clara heat in, in August. But, I, you know, look, all's well that ends well. Hope it ends well with Trent Williams, but we'll see. Uh, no more training camp for you either, unless you want to, Peter. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for coming on with us still. Hey, no problem. I really appreciate it. I miss you guys. You too. You're the best. All right. All right. There Take he goes. Care. Yep. You too. That's uh, that's Peter King.